Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome back to the channel for a bonus Saturday video, which is gonna be my final ride on this, the Tramp Speed Triple 1200 RR. Sadly, it's come time for me to send the bike back to Tramp. My time with the bike is over, so I uh, thought I'd do a bit of a vloggy type video, and just sort of sum up my thoughts on the bike. So if you're interested in the 1200 RR, stick around, stay tuned. I'll tell you what I thought of it. Alrighty, well, it's quite easy to sum up what I thought of this bike. <laughs> I really like it. It's a lovely bike. Unfortunately, during the period that I've had it, I've had this for two weeks, and uh, I was planning on making a few more videos than uh, just these couple I've made. But alas, I've been struck down with COVID for the last couple of weeks. Feeling a bit better today, but I have felt rough, so I haven't ridden the bike as much as I would have liked to have done. Let me point you, if you haven't already seen my first ride review on this video, I'll put a link up in the corner. Because on that uh, video I'll go through all the specs, what it's like to ride, the comfort, all that kind of stuff, the sorts of things you'd expect to see in a review. This video is more going to be about me sort of summing up my final thoughts on it. So yeah, alas, I've not had the chance to bring you one of my sort of more in-depth reviews of what it's like riding in all sorts of different conditions, as I would normally like to do on these uh, longer term loans. But I have ridden the bike for a few hundred miles, I have got a bit of a feel for it and having ridden lots of bikes now. Hello sir, not a waver on the uh, pizza delivery scooter. Having ridden lots of bikes now, you do, get, you do get a bit of an immediate feel for whether you like a bike or not, don't you? And what are the sort of pros and cons? And uh, I like to give an honest review, I like to give pros and cons of every bike I ride really. Because no bike is perfect. Oh look at that Jaguar E-Type, lovely. But I have to say, there's not much about this bike that I don't like, given the sort of bike that it is. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a bit of an unusual bike, isn't it? It's, uh, they've basically taken the Speed Triple, which is a lovely naked bike, you know, a modern naked bike with all the bells and whistles, put a fairing on it, put some uh, clever electronic only suspension on it, made it into sort of a retro style racing bike. And that in itself, to me, is where it's a bit odd. <laughs> in that I'm not quite sure what that market is going to be like for the bike. There have been other bikes that have tried to address that, notably in my mind the uh, R90 Racer, which I love the look of, but nobody bought that because it was so darn uncomfortable to ride. And then of course there's things like the uh, MV Augusta Super Veloce, which I also rode and enjoyed, but again not too sure who would actually buy that bike because you know, if you're in the market for a naked bike, like the Speed Triple, you're probably not going to go for this one, because you've got no advantages of the naked bike, in that you've got this uncomfortable, I'll come back to that in a minute, riding position. You're, it is like a racing bike, I'm lent over the tank here in a racing crouch, so one of the advantages of the, the naked bikes is that you're comfortable. Not so much comfort on this. And if you're in the market for a sports bike, then this isn't particularly a great sports bike. It's, it's nice, it's fine, nothing wrong with it. But, uh, you know, this is an 18 grand motorcycle. You can get a BMW S1000RR for that, which to my mind is a much, much nicer sports bike. And if you're into your sports bikes, you'd probably go down that route. Is this the turn I want? Yes, I think it is. I love this little road down here, going towards a place called Bradenham. If you've seen my videos before, you will have seen this road before. It's just a nice little twisty bit that I can hopefully wind up a little bit on through some trees. Well, anyway, yeah, so I'm not quite sure what the market is for this and whether it will turn out to be one of those bikes that's sort of a bit of a flash in the pan. Everybody says they like it, which I do, but actually nobody buys it because it doesn't quite strike the right chord. I fear that may be the case. Because when it comes to the pros and cons, there's not a lot not to like about it. It's a lovely bike. I mean, it's, it's fast, it handles beautifully well, the ride is comfortable for a sports bike. It seats a little bit hard maybe, but the suspension is plush, as you'd expect from the top-notch Olins on here. It goes fast as well. Brakes are amazing. And it looks great. The downsides for me are, you know, it is that racing bike comfort thing. Now I said I'd mention this again. Oh, into the 30, let's slow down. Because as sports bikes go, 
this isn't that uncomfortable. I mean, I can sit pretty much bolt upright on this. And then it's then it's quite comfy. Look at this lovely green here by the church. This is Bradnam. So, you know, a bit of blossom here. I'm recording this middle of April, so lovely spring weekend day. Lovely day for a ride. So yeah, as sports bikes go, it's, it's not an uncomfortable bike. It's nowhere near as uncomfortable as my Panigale. But let's face it, it's not as comfy as the standard Speed Triple. So that's the downside. And the other downside I found, and this is an odd one, is the indicator button. I struggle sometimes to make it actually activate. I don't know why. It might just be this bike, it might be me, it might be the gloves I'm wearing, I don't know. But Because the switch gear on here is no different to any other Triumph. And I've not had that problem before. But so many times I've, I thought I've activated that uh, indicator to go around a corner to find that actually the indicator wasn't on. Hello sir. Lots of people out today enjoying the ride. This is a fantastic road this. Unfortunately, it being in the southeast means there's loads of traffic. But if you catch this one on an early summer's morning before the traffic's out, it's brilliant. So yeah, so bit of a strange whinge about the switch gear which I think might just be an anomaly for me I wouldn't pay too much attention to that other than that there's nothing not to like about the bike the gearbox is slick the quick blipper up and down quick shifter is lovely even the TFT I like on this and I'm often very critical about uh, Triumph TFTs they often look a bit Fisher Price in the past but they've kind of come of age now I'm not sure about the shape of the surround on there but uh, the actual TFT itself is nice and clear and I like the way it moves aside when you change the modes, that sort of thing. And the bike looks beautiful. But it is just about 18 grand. And for that, there's a lot of other bikes out there, aren't there? Like the S1000RR, you get a uh, KTM Super Duke R, probably a little bit less than that. So I'm wondering who's going to splash that sort of cash on this motorcycle. Of course, if you absolutely love the looks of it, and I do love the looks of it, and they're not, you know, there might be some people that really really love the looks and that is enough to buy it certainly it's a quality machine the fit and finish on it everywhere is lovely it's got lots of carbon on it mud guards little infills are all carbon there's lots of nice details as Triumph do now on the bikes paintwork is nice this little screen's quite effective the mirrors work well it's a beautiful thing this uh, triple clamp at the top whatever it's called yoke whatever you call this bit is, is a nice piece of kit I'm not sure about some of the plastics around that and of course the old sample bottle there is a shame on an 18 grand bike you'd think they could have put the anodized one on let's give the indicator a go oh look at that an old Honda I think see the indicator is not going and I was pretty sure I put it on so unless it's self cancelling much quicker than any other self cancelling indicator I've ever come across for some reason there's an issue there but that might just be me maybe uh, if you're an owner of one of these maybe you know what I'm doing wrong there but as I say, I've ridden this quite a bit now. And that's been an ongoing feature. Just a little niggle. But really that's nothing, is it, in the scheme of things. As I say, I, I'm struggling to find anything about the bike I don't like. Other than the riding position's uncomfortable, but that's the sort of bike it is. You don't buy a sports bike expecting it to be comfortable. You know, on fast roads it's lovely. On twisty sweepers like I just did, that back road, absolutely beautiful. Even in the urban environment, I'm coming in through sort of West Wickham Way into High Wickham here. And you know, 30 mile an hour roads, it absolutely behaves itself, it's beautifully fuelled. Everything about it just works, with the exception of that switch gear. So yeah, so, so I'm left a little bit um, confused, we'll see how it goes. I've loved my time with the bike, it's a lovely thing to ride. I don't think I would buy one, because if I wanted to go retro I'd go properly retro and get something like a speed twin if I wanted a sports bike I would go properly sports bike and get an S1000 RR let's just move up here and if I wanted a naked bruiser then I'd get the Ducati Street Fighter V4 or the KTM Super Duke R so there we go is it just me that thinks like that I'll be fascinated in your comments below as to whether you agree with my summation on this. Practically, it's very easy to live with. It's, uh, you know, I can get my feet flat on the deck. I'm five foot eight, which is nice. 
it feels quite light to move around the turning circle seems reasonable I found it easy to move in and out of my garage you know and I've got very dicky shoulders I have arthritis in both my shoulders I'm always whinging about that so sports bikes and me generally don't get on but this one isn't too bad I've been riding this today for and about now oh, look at that it's one of those Yamaha three-wheeler jobbies I don't know what they're called the scooter type thing see there's another bike you don't see now and that was there's all that fanfare about you remember the uh, the Nikon the Yamaha Nikon the three-wheel bike really pleased that Yamaha brought that out amazing bit of engineering and I enjoyed riding it but absolutely nobody bought them and uh, I don't think I've ever seen them on the road and I don't even know if they make them anymore whether they're still in the Yamaha catalogue and I just have a fear this will go that way which will be a shame but it might also mean if you do buy one if you do love the looks of the bike that this could be a future classic and it'll only go up in value the other bike that wasn't so expensive but the other bike that Triumph did a similar thing with I guess is the Street Cup do you remember that? which again was a lovely bike to ride that was uh, based on the Bonneville platform 900cc and was sort of a calf racer type thing but a fairly extreme one wasn't as high spec as the Thruxton but it was along that sort of line it sounded epic in fact the Street Cup is the uh, bike you hear on the starts of my videos when you have that little uh, revving up engine thing with my logo at the start of the videos that's the Triumph Street Cup with a standard exhaust one of the best sounding bikes I've ever ridden well again Triumph just sort of quietly withdrew that I don't think you've been able to buy those for a few years now just because I think that riding position was uh, too much anyway that's my theory I hope I'm wrong and I hope we see this bike around for a while because it is a lovely thing the engine on here is absolutely beautiful I love uh, Triumph triples but again if you've got 18k and you want a Triumph triple a really good one then the uh, standard speed triple is probably the way to go you get the same engine okay you don't get the fancy suspension but what is the betting in a year or two's time Triumph doesn't bring out a uh, sort of a speed triple S or something or a premium version of that a more premium version that has this same Olin's electronic uh, suspension on it which I think would have been a great move if they'd made that bike perhaps instead of this I think that would have sold you know, I might be talking rubbish I'm, I'm no expert of course on these things and I'm sure Triumph have done their research and know exactly what their customers want I'm just surprised that it's this but it does look good just trying to catch a look at my reflection in that pub window Chilton Taps look at that looks quite good doesn't it never been in there I'm far too old for that sort of establishment alas so yeah anyway the bike goes back day after tomorrow so that'll be it for my uh, time with the Speed Triple 1200 RS hope you've uh, enjoyed that little video just a little extra bonus I uh, kind of commit to make a video every Wednesday on the channel but uh, every now and then I like to put out a bonus on a Saturday too and in fact I think I've put out bonus Saturday videos for every Saturday for about the last three months and I'll be doing <laughs> the same for a few weeks more but I expect that will drop off a bit as summer comes and hopefully I'll get away and do a few more trips and tours and stuff hello sir if that's a viewer if it is hello to you <laughs> So yeah, in the summer, my uh, rate of putting out videos may drop off a little bit as I uh, go out and do a few more trips and tours, assuming my shoulders hold up. But I really hope they will, because I've really missed that. I haven't been out on a decent bike tour for ages. I've got lots of plans this year with some great stuff coming up. I'll tell you more about that nearer the time. Anyway, that's it for this time. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you've not been to the channel before, do consider hitting that subscribe button. I could do with all the subscribers I can get. If you like the video, hit the like thing. If you haven't liked it, hit that down don't like button as well. It all helps. That would be brilliant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, look forward to speaking to you again next time. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. Nice up. Noisy devil. <laughs>